So I've been seeing some version of this dress everywhere this summer. Was this in my content schedule? Absolutely not. Is it seasonally appropriate? Meh, maybe. It's still 95 degrees here in Texas. So I thought, why not? Let's make it. So I took $20 and two patterns I've made before and made a dress. So hello and welcome back to Ashley Made Makes and today we're making a milkmaid dress. So truth be told my sojo's been a little bit off over the summer. I've had a lot of issues with my sewing machines so I thought I would ease myself back in with a couple of patterns that I've made before. So I'm using the Charm Patterns Rita blouse and the Cashmere Upted skirt to create this kind of mashup dress and it takes the Rita blouse from a very 50s place into almost a 70s place. This dress is very cottage core and I ended up using just some inexpensive lightweight quilting cotton from Joann's. So if all this sounds good to you, let's get into it. So we're working on the floor today and I'm doing this because of a couple of reasons. The main one being that this print is directional, meaning that the flowers do face up and so I want to make sure that all my pieces were laying the correct direction so that all my flowers were pointing up as they should be on all my panels. So I'm just going ahead and cutting all my panels out first. The other reason I'm doing this is my fabric is only 45 inches wide because it is some inexpensive quilting cotton. Actually, I think it even might be a little bit smaller than that because it definitely did shrink quite a lot. Um, so it's probably closer to 43. But what's great about the Upton skirt, it is, is in panels like that. So I was able to cut it out of my 45 inch wide fabric. And I'm just using my very fun electric scissors that I just got. So this was actually a lot more of a fun process uh, than normal cutting. I am really enjoying them. You can see I did have to go over a couple of times there because I'm still getting the hang of it. But overall, I actually think they're pretty easy to use. Especially with the pattern weights and stuff, it disrupts the fabric very little. And I'm just making sure I mark all my notches in there. So I'm just going ahead and ripping my ruffles here just by clipping along the salvage there at the same interval and then tearing them. That'll give me some really nice straight ruffles to work with. I did use a full six yards for this project, so it was quite fabric hungry with trying to deal with the directional print as well. Also here, I've cut out two of my waistbands, so double the waistband pieces, and I'm just busy here sewing them all together. This really helped in the stability of my last dress, so I thought I would do it again here, and it does give a really nice clean finish inside the dress. I noticed on some of the samples they did also bone them, but I'm so short-waisted that I don't think this really matters, and... You could, of course, do this, though, just by um, including some boning in these seam allowances shown here. So on to adding the gathering. So I'm just adding the gathering under the bust here um, and doing double, double the gathering stitches. That'll give me some really nice even gathering. It's important to get some really nice even gathering here because it is the top of your dress. And again, however it's gathered is how it's going to stay. So just working on that, making sure I've got no tails caught under there that can get caught in my machine because that's also a bad time. And now I'm doing a little pre-ironing. Uh, you see me do this a lot, but especially on these Rita's, because there's so many small little seam allowances, it's really helpful to press them in before you've got the piece together while you can still do it on the flat. And I'm using that little felt ironing guide I have, so I'll leave it down below. But uh, honestly, I find it's the best way to do it. And on this being quilting cotton, you don't even have to work that hard at it, which is great. I was in my linen era and, you know, it's so nice working with cotton again. I think I'm back, you know. Um, it's, it's fantastic. It's just so easy. So again, just measuring using that pressing guide and just kind of pre-pressing these all in. Like I say, with the cotton, you barely have to even pin it or anything. It'll just stay like that. I did have a bit of issues getting my process order out of order on this project. So you saw me press the front earlier. Um, this is the edge of the sleeve that I'm doing right now. So I got my processes a little out of order here, so I might be jumping around a bit. 
um, cause I'll end up seam ripping it and then reattaching the waistband back to the top of the bodice. So if you see me jumping around and you're wondering what's going on there, that's what we did. But here I am using my pinging shears on my pocket. I do pink a lot of this project, uh, just cause it is quilting cotton. It really doesn't need much more than that, especially on these long straighter seams and anywhere that's got stress is going to be tucked up into that waistband or rubbing. So I'm not really concerned about it with the long seams being just pinked or pinked around the pockets. So again, really friendly. Cotton makes things really easy. Pinging shears is almost like cutting the whole length of it, like on the bias. So basically what you're creating is a bunch of little tiny bias lines so that it can't shred through straight. They pretty much only work on cotton and like wool and other stable fibers in my opinion. I wouldn't want to use something like those on a linen. On my linen I did finish everything off with my serger. So here I am just attaching those pockets now to the side of my dress. Just making sure it's sewn on really well and then ironing everything nice and flat, nice and even. And then I'm pressing that seam allowance towards the pocket. We're going to be doing a little bit of understitching here and pressing my side seams as well. I like to batch sew, so I'll basically do as much sewing as I can and then do a whole batch of ironing and vice versa. So I've sewn my whole front and back panels together before moving on to ironing all these seams nice and flat before attaching them and moving on to the next stage. Here I am doing that understitching. Again, kind of important, keeps your pockets from poking out and keeps them nice and smooth on your garment and pockets are not optional in my opinion. So here I am just trimming off the fuzzies on the salvage edge for the ruffle. So I'm not using my pinking shears there cause it's already sealed in from the salvage, but just making sure it's like a little bit nicer. You can kind of see where that white salvage edge is and then just pressing that all flat. So we have a nice big continuous ruffle here. I really wish I had added more to this ruffle, like made it longer and fluffier. This is about a one and a half ruffle. And yes, that means the ruffles did win the poll on my community tab. I had asked you guys whether you wanted me to do a ruffle on the bottom of this skirt or a slit similar to the inspiration images and you guys picked ruffle. It was actually pretty close there for a while, but then ruffle pulled ahead. So if you'd like to be part of polls like this, please do subscribe and then you'll be notified when I do put up polls like this on future projects. And overall, I think the ruffle was a really good call. I was kind of leaning towards that direction anyways, but you know, just the overwhelming amount of my inspo that had slits on it. But I think overall I'm more comfortable in the one with the ruffle. I just wish I'd made the ruffle bigger slash had bought more fabric to make the ruffle bigger, but that's neither here nor there. And I'm just going ahead and gathering down my ruffle here and then just pinning it in place. You'll see that I'm just trying to even it out with my fingers and just kind of really give it a good zhuzh before we move on because the way this is again is the way this will be on the final dress. It's not that ruffled so I don't think I got this as even as I might have liked but I did my best and that's all you can say. I gathered it down to the front and the back separately which I think was a good call instead of trying to gather it all the way around but here I am just sewing that long ruffle on and I did pre-hem all those little baby hems in too just to make sure that it is done while it's still in the flat again making it easier on myself but here I am completing the bodice so I'm just attaching the sleeves here and again going through those little hems as well as sewing up the sides so the bodice is basically complete before I attach the two portions together so, and actually the bodice here, I'm just calling from boobs up. So the waistband pieces will actually end up being more of the waistband of the skirt. That's how this construction works out. It took me a bit to noodle through that construction for some reason, but there we go. And we're gonna have a little bit of a satisfying lift and spin coming up here as I'm just sewing together my skirt panels. So I just went around the pocket there and now I'm gonna be cruising down the side of my skirt just to complete that as well going past and onto my ruffle and then actually through where I've ironed that little baby hem in and then I'll fold that back 
So I'll just fold it back here and then continue just sewing that little baby hem around the ruffle all the way around the skirt. And that'll give it completed and hemmed and make sure it's all nice and everything. Another way to do this would be to add some bit of lace or something to this back edge instead. Take it into more gunny sacks territory. That could be really fun. But, you know, we're just going basic today. And then I'm sewing up that other side of my bodice for some reason. Like I say, this was a little bit disjointed with... The way I ended up doing this, because I didn't realize that that's how the order of operations need to be until I got there. But again, pinging those side seams. And here we're finishing off the top. So I'm finishing off that elastic channel. So I'm just making sure that all those kind of points where that pre-ironed in area meets is all ironed as well and as neat as it can be before I sew in that channel there. So just ironing those little sections where my seam allowances meet. You can see me just folding it back over. It is still nice because the majority of it is set in place. And then I'm doing the little pin trick here. So you can see I had a start pin and an end pin, even though it doesn't really need it. Being that's in cotton, it pretty much holds itself in place, like I said. So I'm just sewing as close as I can to the edge here, just to make sure I don't have anything interfering with my elastic going around in my channel. I opted out of the elastic on the sleeve edges. I know that would have been a lot closer to the inspiration images, but personally I just don't really like elastic on my upper arms. Um, and I don't think proportionally it's a great look on me, so I just left them as baby hems instead. Kind of the other option for the Rita. So now I'm just pinning that waistband to the skirt, the first waistband anyway. And I'm trying to go ahead and get it all lined up super well with the lines on the skirt. So I adjusted that when I cut this out to make those both line up together. So just making sure I get a nice clean finish on that. So I'm sewing that on first. And then here I am sandwiching it together with the bodice. So I've got the... Uh, bodice and the skirt right sides together and then a second waistband pinned on the back and you can just sort of see that I've got that pre-ironed up five eighths of an inch there just so to make it easier later when I go to stitch it down and then just making sure that that is all nice and flat as I go to do this just to make sure nothing's getting caught in there and there it is all folded out. So you can see here that I can just tuck all my raw edges underneath that, which is going to be great. And right now I'm doing that hack that I did before. So previously, if you'd seen my cottagecore dress video, I had done all the drafting in that video. So I'll leave that up above. But I'm applying that same hack here with the faux shearing on the back of this dress, just because that worked out so well and... It was so comfortable and functional last time. And honestly, I have a ton of this elastic left. This is the same type of elastic that you use to make masks. And so I have a ton of it left because uh, I kind of overbought. So it's great for making these Rita blouses. But the gist of it is I'm showing sewing in a bunch of channels here about half an inch apart all the way down this waistband. And then I'm going to be threading that elastic through in between the two pieces of the waistband using my little safety pin trick. So I sort of put the elastic on the safety pin and then feed it through into the end. There we go, finally coming out the other side. And then I'll just remove that safety pin and then make sure I've got it pinned down super well before moving on to the next one. Maybe in a year. And there we go. Removing the safety pin. And then we'll pin it down. I haven't sewn up the rest of the waistband yet. We'll get there. So I'm going to repeat that a couple of times. I ended up putting three channels in this waistband. And now I'm just going to grab all my tails here and pull on them to gather this. Now I gather it to the point where basically the elastic will stretch to the point where I can have it flat so I can get it over my head. If you have a 
very large ratio, this hack might not work for you, but for me it works great. I think there is over five inches in here, so it's well more than enough to pull it over my head. And that gives me a lot of adjustability, which is excellent. So, and here I am just trying to show you a little bit of hand sewing. I don't do it super often, but this was the best way to finish off this dress and the kind of nicest, cleanest, smoothest finish possible. I could have top stitched this down as well, but actually I think this was easier and I would have had some pretty uneven top stitching, I imagine, if I hadn't have done it this way. And there you can see how clean that result is. So the, like I say, the great majority of the seams are finished, except for those ones I pinked along the skirt. And here we are. I do absolutely love this dress. I think the shape is really good on me. And look at those deep pockets on it. I think it is the culmination of a lot of things I really love and kind of my iterative process in sewing. So I do think it is really cool to show. And overall, I'm really happy with it. I think a couple of changes I would make was to make that ruffle a bit deeper, as I said, or a little bit fuller. And for some reason, my bra straps stick out on the back of this one. Don't know why this one has that issue when my others don't, but hey, either way, I still love it. I think it'll be really good into the fall with a sweater layered and it'll be adorable. Also, I want to let you know that I did share a Pinterest board for this with all the inspiration images. If you'd like to go check that out, it's in the description bar, along with all the patterns, the fabric and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching today. If you did enjoy today's video, please go ahead and click right here to watch the next one. Bye guys.